Hi, welcome back to my crafty hen house. My name is Elaine. Today I have you in my craft room and I'm going to go through the process that I use to make fake bakes. Now fake bakes are just as they sound. They are baked treats that are fake. These are made out of model magic with the frosting and artificial sprinkles. I also have a little bunny that I did with the sprinkles. And I have these little cookies that I did with sprinkles and glitter. Again, these are artificial sprink sprinkles that you can purchase on Etsy or Amazon. And you can also make cupcakes or little cakes with frosting and sprinkles on them. There's a multitude of different fake bakes that you can make, but today I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how I make my Valentine's Day cookies. Now these cookies are again made with model magic and I've painted one side. And as you can see, the red paint needs additional layers. So it takes quite a few, about three uh, layers of paint. Uh, you let them dry in between. This is another one that I painted. And then what we'll do is we'll frost them with our artificial frosting and put some sprinkles on them. This is the cookie that I will be uh, frosting with you. I'm gonna show you the process of getting the cutout cookie. I've painted the back and I'm satisfied with how many layers this cookie has on it of paint. So this is the one we will be uh, frosting. So let me turn your attention down to my table and I'll show you exactly how I work with the Model Magic clay. First of all, I'm going to show you the Model Magic that I use. I purchased this from Amazon. You can get it from Hobby Lobby, from Walmart. Michael's Crafts, and inside uh, this comes with four individual bags of Model Magic Clay. These are the individual bags that are inside and they're sealed in like a foil bag. And you wanna keep them sealed tightly when you're not using them because they will uh, dry out. Model Magic Clay is very easy to use. Uh, I store mine in a Ziploc bag um, when I'm storing it in the plastic container. And what you wanna do is you want to prepare your clay. I use uh, regular standard cookie cutouts for all of my fake bake cookies. Uh, there's so many different shapes and sizes that you can use. Uh, I have little bunny rabbits that I used when I made this little cookie, and then I put the frosting on the top of it. These are the heart uh, cut cookie cutouts with the waffling around the edge. So there's so many different shapes that you use. But what you wanna do is you wanna prepare your Model Magic clay. If you don't prepare your clay properly, then what'll happen is your clay will crack and it won't, it won't uh, process and dry properly. So what I do is I start out by stretching it and when it tears apart, that means it's not ready yet. You wanna continue to stretch and fold and warm the clay up in your hands. Now you can use uh, all different types of clay. You can use uh, overnight drying clay. You can use polymer clay, uh, but whatever you use, you wanna make sure that you prepare the clay properly uh, so that it has the right elasticity for when you're going to make uh, your cutouts. You don't want it to be too dry. You want it to be nice and pliable. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to pull this apart until I get a long stretch in between. This will also, uh, when your hands are warm, it'll also loosen up and get very pliable the more that you get your hands warm. And you can see where it's now almost perfect. The less amount that you use at one time, the easier it is to prepare the clay as well. 
So now you can see how nice and pliable this clay is. All right, now we're, what we're going to do is we're going to form a nice ball. You don't want any air pockets inside your clay. And then I have a piece of glass. It was an old shelf that I use on my wooden table. Now, if you're working on Formica uh, or a, a, a smooth uh, cutting board, like a plastic mat, um, I wouldn't put this directly on wood uh, because this is moist and it will pick up any little debris that is in the crack of the wood. So I've got this little piece of glass. You could probably get a quarter to a half inch uh, thick piece of glass from your local hardware store, Home Depot or Lowe's. So what I've done is I flattened out the clay to about a half of an inch thickness and I'm gonna put it on my glass and I needed to find out what was a good thickness to have these cookies. And this is a, a raw cookie that is about four days uh, from when I cut it out because you want them to be nice and hard. So this is about a quarter of an inch thick. So what I did was I found some wooden dowels. Now these wooden dowels are about the same thickness that I would like my cookies. So I've got two wooden dowels here and I'll lay them on either side of my clay. The purpose for laying them on either side of this clay is so that when I use a rolling pin, now this is for polymer clay. Um, and it is an acrylic uh, roller. Now you can use your, I would say, marble roller. I wouldn't use a wooden um, bakery roller that you would use in your kitchen just because of the particles of wood or debris that are probably in the little wood grains. But this, again, this is an acrylic roller. You can get it where you purchase polymer clay at. And I use this and it does not stick to the clay. That's another big issue that you have with this Model Magic clay is it's um, it will stick to anything that's porous. So then what I do is I start in the middle on top of my dowels and I roll back and forth. This is going to create the thickness of the fake baked cookie that I'm looking for. So I'll start in the middle and roll upwards. Then I come back with both hands pushing down on the wooden dowels and going back and forth until I have a nice thickness. Now, if you have wooden dowels that are too thick, you can remove your dowels and give this another light roll and that will um, make it a little bit thicker. You just are thinner, I'm sorry. You just want to make sure that the thickness is going to not be too thin where there's too much flexibility, even when it's dry, but there's a nice uh, thickness that it's not uh, hugely bendable when uh, you're drying it out in the three days. I'm going to give this another slight roll, make it nice and smooth surface, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to take whichever cutout we decide we're gonna use. We're gonna use the, the waffled uh, heart again. So I'm gonna put this down and you wanna do it just like a cookie. You wanna press down and push in top to bottom and side to side ever so slightly. Now with Model Magic clay, the clay sticks to itself. So if you take this cookie cutter up before you remove the excess clay, what will happen is the clay will stick to the cookie you just cut out and it will mold to itself and it'll stick and you won't be able to get a nice cookie cut out. You're gonna have to start the process again. So what I do is I take this little tool, this is also for polymer clay and uh, it's a tool that scrapes the polymer clay off of a smooth surface. Uh, you can use one of these little plastic knives you get in um, with Play-Doh. 
so what I do is I take my little tool and I cut away the excess before I lift up the cookie cutter. And what that will allow me to do is to pull the cookie cutter up. I again use this little metal polymer clay tool and I tuck under and lift up. And there you have your cookie cut out. Now you're gonna get a few rough edges and you just can tap those down ever so slightly with your dry hand and those little edges will go underneath and you can leave some, it's just the natural look of a regular cutout cookie. So again, if you take your cookie cutout and you're making a, a cut out of any type of little design. Let's just use this little heart. We're gonna push down, up and back and side to side. We're gonna move that clay away. We're gonna take our tool and cut away the excess because if I lift the cookie cutter up, it's going to stick to the polymer clay and I'm gonna have to start all over. And then you're gonna pick up your cookie cutter and lift up, push down and lift up. And you have your little cutout cookie. Now, as you can see with these cookies, they are very pliable when you first get done. They actually have to sit for three to four days to harden up and then you can work on painting them. I don't recommend jumping right in and painting them. You're going to have to handle them a lot and the paint's not going to dry properly. And you just wanna set them on a tray and let them dry. Now what I have is I have a piece of board. This is a regular cardboard. It's uh, you can get it in uh, Kmart or Wal I'm sorry, Walmart or Target. And I lay all my cookies out flat. And every other every day, after I lay them out flat, I come and I turn them over the next morning, so that the uh, back side dries as well. So that's what you're going to want to do is find a hard surface. This is a this is like a um, a hard poster board or display board and you want to take them each after you cut them out and you want to flip them for three to four days so that the opposite side will dry. So now that you have your cookie all cut out, you're going to take your Model Magic and put it in your Ziploc bag, removing the air, and you're going to go ahead and Tighten that up and put that back in your plastic container. Again, these cookies have to sit for three to four days. So I'm going to put this one over here on this cardboard. And these are cookies that have been cured for about four days. So you can see how hard they are. They're not sticking to one another uh, and they're ready to be painted. Now you can either paint them a solid color like I've done to these, or you can actually texture them. And these are done with a mixture of paint that I created that would resemble a baked cookie. And then you can add different colors to it to texturize it and make, look, make it look like it went through the baking process. Then what you would do is you just decorate the top like a regular cookie. And that's what we did with the bunny rabbit. The bunny rabbit was painted and then we went ahead and we frosted and put on the sprinkles. And this blue cookie is the one that I'll be demonstrating today. This was a painted cookie with frosting, sprinkles, and glitter. So there was no need to go ahead and uh, paint it in the baked uh, cookie color.
Now that you have your cookie painted the color that you chose, I chose this dark red. This is an acrylic paint. You can get any small acrylic paints from Hobby Lobby, from Walmart, and they work uh, just fine. And I gave this three or four coats of paint. Um, the red seems a little bit more difficult to get a full coverage, and I'm not as concerned with the top as I want full coverage on the back. Um, but this was painted and I'm ready to do the frosting now. I would recommend when you start with fake bakes that you go ahead and you get a piping bag like this one. It's by Wilton and it has a built-in tip. It's right inside the bag so it's not going to come out. You purchase them this way. You can purchase them in, I believe, sets of four or six per bag. Uh, when you start out, it has a real nice tip on it. And this does uh, virtually anything. You can do cupcakes, cakes, cookies, anything with this tip. It's sort of a standard tip. Um, these are the metal tips um, that are um, a lot of fake bakers that uh, do it full time. They use, this is called a 2D, 2D tip, and you can see the opening on it. This one is a 2F. It has a bit of a different opening than the 2D. And then we have, uh, this is a 1M. This is a very popular tip with fake bakers. And these you would use inside of uh piping bags that are not cut at the bottom. You would drop the tip inside the bag at the top and uh, snip the bottom and then this tip would pop out of the bottom and you would fill it with your, your material for your frosting. So this is what they use in um, Fake Bake for their frosting. It's a lightweight spackle. There's different types of spackles you can get in the building departments, but this is considered lightweight, and this is what you want to use. You want it very light so it's not going to like melt on top of your Fake Bakes. They're two different materials. This uh, being that this is clay and this spackle, they resist each other with the moisture. So you want to make sure that you can get them pretty comparable in texture so that you're not dealing with uh, one material drawing moisture from the other and then you have an imbalance. Uh, now what you want to do is I've designated this little spackle container for my white spackle. You take your, uh, your lightweight spackle and you want to add some white paint to it. Um, again, you'll use the, your acrylic paint. Uh, you want to drizzle it onto the spackle. And then I take a regular knife, um, an old uh, butter knife that I have, well, I'm sorry, a regular kitchen knife that I have. And you want to stir your lightweight spackle and get a nice creamy texture and make sure that it's not too moist. If it's too moist, then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna add some uh, flour or cornstarch and mix that in until you get a nice consistency. You can see that this has a nice consistency, but it is a little bit creamier than I'd like. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add uh, some of my uh, flour. Now that I have my consistency where I would like it, I'm gonna go ahead and fill this piping bag, um, but I'm not gonna fill it completely as if I was doing a big project since it's only one cookie. I'm just gonna fill it and that should be enough. I'm gonna go ahead and put this lid on really tightly. If you don't put the lid on tightly, it does have a tendency to dry out. And I'm gonna take my knife and wipe it off with a paper towel. You wanna make sure that you wipe your materials off with a paper towel and not rinse them down the sink. Uh, the spackling will cause havoc on your plumbing. Uh, now I'm gonna take my piping bag and I have my frosting and you want to push the frosting towards the tip 
just until it reaches the tip and starts to come uh, to the tip. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our bag and twist the bag until you get your piping to start to come out. The frosting comes out of the tip. And then you're gonna pick up your cookie and you can either go in the design of the cookie and place your frosting or you can do it in lines back and forth or you can do it in dots and I think that's what I'm going to do. So you want to give a gentle squeeze to the frosting bag and you're going to push and pick up, push and pick up and you're going to go all the way around your cookie, push and pick up, push and pick up until you get a nice coverage that you're happy with. Push, push and pick up. And there you have it. Now you can add as little or as much of your frosting as you want. Keeping in mind that this uh, spackling does dry quickly, so you're going to want to get any type of embellishments on top of your cookie. So I'm going to add sprinkles. Now these are a couple different sprinkles that I picked up from an Etsy shop. They're for Valentine's Day. And I'm going to go ahead and use these. And we're going to just take a couple of them. We're going to drop them on top of the cookie. And then I'm going to go ahead and I have some other red sprinkles as well. These are a little bit foiled for Valentine's Day. And I'm going to drop those on as well. And there you have it. Your Valentine fake bake cookie is now complete. Now you're going to want to take this cookie and set it aside. And it's going to have to set for three to four days. Again, for your frosting to set up, you don't want to mess up your frosting by moving it around too much. So I will set that back over on the plate. So thank you again for joining me for my small tutorial on fake bake cookies and I hope you enjoyed uh, everything that I tried to instruct you on uh, going over my materials, my paints, the tips that I use and uh, you can also find some of my fake bakes on uh, my Etsy store which is uh, my crafty hen house all one word and um, see different things that I make over there. I hope to do another instructional video on perhaps some of the other fake bakes that I make. They're a lot of fun. They're beautiful in your kitchen and they make a really, really nice display under a dome lid or on a beautiful little plate for the holidays. So I hope you enjoyed this again and thank you. And until the next time, have a blessed day.